Peter King, congressman from Staten Island, who actually lives in the same borough as as uh, Mr. Garner or as Mr. Garner did, he he had a different take on as a New Yorker and somebody who um, and somebody who uh, who who who's been following this story. And I just want to cut to that video right quick and then get everybody's reaction. First of all, the uh, death was tragic, and uh, our hearts have to go out to the uh, Garner family. Having said that, I do not believe, I feel strongly the police officer should not have been indicted. I've been following this case from the start. You had a 350-pound person who was resisting arrest. The police were trying to bring him down as quickly as possible. If he had not had asthma and a heart condition, it was so obese that almost definitely he would not have died from this. The police had no reason to know that he was in serious condition. I know people were saying that he said 11 times or seven times I can't breathe. Well, the fact is, if you can't breathe, you can't talk. Yeah. So uh, basically, if Eric Garner wasn't such wasn't so fat, uh, he would be he would be still alive today. And he was resisting arrest. I mean, it doesn't matter that he was being arrested for a bullshit charge. But I guess I guess you know he's resisting, and they wanted to take him down as fast as, as quickly as possible. Which, by the way, like when did we decide that? somebody selling loose cigarettes needed to be taken down as quickly as possible by any means necessary. Uh, let me just say something about uh, Representative Peter King. It, it, I mean, what, what can you say about this guy? This guy is completely off base pretty much everything he ever talks about. I mean, e even if the police officer thought it necessary to take Mr. Garner down, there would have been multiple other ways to do so rather than a chokehold to the neck, in which case he was saying I can't breathe over, I think, what was it, about 10 times, 8 to 10 times, uh, and eventually died right then and, you know, so, uh, you know, tasers or whatever, I mean, it, but even there, even there would be an excessive force. Uh, it's pretty clear what Representative King is doing. He's driving a wedge between a, a, a certain segment of the community that happens to be against a minority community that would side with a, a Republican policy that's tough on uh, those kind, you know, somebody with a darker skin complexion. I, it, it's pathetic and it's really sickening to watch, but that's what it is. I think Representative King uh, has had one too many pudding pops from Bill Cosby and really needs to uh, have one more and keep his mouth shut. Um, he, if, if you're going to start by fat shaming when you're uh, in need of a gym, you really need to keep your mouth shut. Um, I, I just, I think it's horrible that he did that and how he said that. And I'm really tired of Republicans and the conservative meme of constantly uh, blaming the victim. I mean, really, every case, it's the victim's fault. Um, the victim can't even defend themselves. Okay? Uh, Representative King can defend himself uh, himself for my pudding pop. So um, I, I, I'm really tired of the the victim blaming and and everything else that's gone on by the uh, conservatives. And uh, not for nothing, uh, Bill O'Reilly, he was so merciful the other night. He would not have choked Eric Gardner so much. He still would have done the thing that's banned. But he wouldn't have choked him so much, and he would have released his arm, you know, when he heard he couldn't breathe. So, you know, merciful old Bill O'Reilly one. Um, I don't think it was actually about... What he was saying was, wasn't about the fact. It wasn't about, you know, well, here's twofold. I'm going to split it in half. Because I didn't go... I didn't split it in half. Okay, so... The issue with the cop grabbing the guy, it wasn't about him grabbing the guy. It was about dominance. A lot of police officers, I spent a lot of time as a, a, make, talking to police officers, just talking to them because, you know, I used to get, because I wore hoodies and I always kept my hair covered and I'm a little chunky, I used to walk from the poor area into the rich area and the rich area into the poor area. So I actually used to switch over my cops. The cops that I, you know, the cops at that border area, you know, would follow me around like, you know, I was stealing something constantly and I couldn't figure it out. So when I got older, I started making these videos and stuff and, you know, yeah, got me a job later on in life. But I started just cop talking to these cops, you know, uh, and 
Um, he started giving me tips, you know. The reason why sometimes we stop black people is because a lot of black people flinch. And then when a white person flinches when I walk by, I have to stop them and take a little better look at them. You know, they give me all these excuses and stuff like that. But when it came down to it, it was about dominance. And even if they're in a, in a position where they know that they are wrong, they have trouble walking away without asserting their dominance first. And it's a consistent, it's consistently about dominance and submission. And they're taught to have control of every situation. I'm going to walk into a situation, you have to control it. Police Academy, control the situation, control the situation, control the situation. And they confuse controlling the situation with asserting dominance on somebody. And right. They, they confuse, they conf you're confusing it with de-escalation and they're confusing it because the because of the system, because we have, you know, we have a, a increasingly sophisticated um, society where people before would just accept things. They don't accept things as quickly and as readily as they once did. You know, the amount of control that a police officer had in the 1950s with the white audiences was, you know, the person would just do it and say, hey, Mr. Officer, third thing, you know. And right now what we're dealing with is we're not dealing with Sheriff Andes. We're dealing with they've hired, instead of hiring Sheriff Andy who actually thought about the way his town needed to run, you know, because, you know, he knew that the town needed to run so he would get paid. If the town, if I put everybody in jail, the town doesn't run. Now, what you have here is you've hired a whole bunch of um, Barney Fife's. And Barney Fife was a fuck up. He was a fuck up because he put in every single time he got the smallest amount of control of his town, he put everybody in jail. Without realizing that if people are in jail, they can't pay your salary. And he would put people in jail for minor offenses, little dits and dots, and 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 it would clog the system with all the things that Barney would put everybody in jail for. And a town doesn't work that way. Cops are supposed to look the other way every now and then. Because if I put everybody who did any little thing in jail, I would be spending more money on jail than they make for the society itself. Which is what we are currently doing with the Gulag system. Now, that's part one. But, part but two. You're, not, you're not answering the, the critical question is... Isn't it more Michael? Is oh, sorry, I keep confusing Michael Brown and Eric Garner. Isn't Eric it more Garner. Eric Garner's fault for having asthma than the cops' fault? Yeah, for I'm getting to part two. I'm getting part two with Stupid King. Part one was cop. The cop had the his distinct impression he couldn't walk away. He couldn't walk away because he was trained incorrectly to to walk away. It was also a screening issue. You know, we have a very low bar. It doesn't matter if we're not talking. Most of the, the firefighters and medical personnel work for free. Cops don't work for free. Large portions of our firefighting police, firefighters work for ditzy. They also get their pension screwed, but they still do their job. Okay, so that's part one. Part two, the reason why King, Peter King is stupid, or whatever his name is, it's not about... It's not about this guy having asthma. He believes in the society, whatever it is that he's told to believe in. He believes in the blue collar, you know, heart of the earth, you know, guys who are paying my rent, um, the people that matter. And, you know, it's the same old story that, you know, Eric Garner is the people that don't. He did something wrong in the past, so therefore you no longer become an American citizen. Because one time he did something wrong. So therefore he does not receive the rights that everybody else does. And he's no longer an American citizen because he did one thing wrong one time. Which is how America works. It doesn't matter. You don't stop becoming an American citizen because you're homeless. You don't stop becoming an American citizen because you're fo in foster care. You don't stop becoming an American citizen because you got kicked out of the army. You know, you don't stop becoming an American citizen, but it... for. For people like Peter King, you know, it's about the sinner. You know, he's sinned, so therefore he's worthless to society. 
well, you know what? Eric Garner's going to cost us around four to five million dollars. And there goes your pension fund, assholes. You know, he's going to cost us untold amounts of money. And if the National Guard gets cut, gets pulled out, which cost, which will cost a state when the National Guard pulls them, which will cost the state one point five million dollars a day. Wait, one point five million dollars a day. One point five or one point eight? I can't remember. A dollar a day. Eric Garner matters now, huh, son of a bitch? Eric Garner matters, huh? You know, it's like it's like you know they don't think it's like they treat like they treat this tax money and these people in this in the country like it's freaking monopoly. And right. you know, beware always beware of the righteous. Always because you well, know, especially the, especially and not to cut you off, and I apologize for that, but no, I just no, go for anyway. it. Um, beware of the self-righteous, the the Republican, uh, Jesus-loving, self-righteous, I'm right, you're wrong, and I'm going to beat your ass with my Bible as I tell you how right I am. I just want to, I, I want to what you call it, I just want to, like, encapsulate this. And the Eric Garner case is, it's, it's, it's on video. It's, like, so, it's so, like, obvious. It's so, like, the it's fact that nullification. They, yeah, the, jury nullification. KKK days jury nullification. But it's not even jury nullification. Like it's it like you could say there's reasonable doubt after we go to trial. This is a grand jury, and like I the know the grand juries used to nullify. Don't you remember? Yeah, but it's just all you need is probable cause. And if you're a prosecutor, and I think it's not jury nullification. I think it's the prosecutor throwing the case. Like this case it's could true. Be you're, you're not paying attention. How old you remember? You're an, you're you're a a law student. We have both been at the at the jury at the grand jury stuff. If they did not pick, was it a special juror? I think it was a special jury. It was it was a grand jury, and I think they were in special since, since August. Yeah. Okay. If it's the grand jury, how old are the people on the grand jury? Well, I don't I don't know that information. They only give us the CNN. I think gave us the racial makeup, but that's not the point I want to make. It doesn't. It should, they're it older. Should, but it shouldn't take 20 days to present this. It shouldn't take 30 days. It shouldn't take 40 days to present this case. It should take 40 minutes if you're a prosecutor. Here's the operations manual where a chokehold is illegal. Here's the other section where it says if somebody says they can't breathe, you have to give them oxygen. Here's the video. Make an indictment. Like, that's it. Like, I, I feel, and that's because this information hasn't been released yet, but I feel like, and I think I'm probably 900% right, that they threw this case, and I think that's that's a shame. Even when it's like clear as day, no conflicting testimony, it, it doesn't matter. Like there's no justice if you're if you're in a certain group in America against the police. 